Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease is an acute, self-limiting vasculitic disease. It was first described in a series of 50 Japanese children as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. It is predominantly occurring in uh, Japanese and Korean children, although it occurs across the, the, the board in all ethnic groups. Um, and it is a leading cause or, of cardiac disease or of acquired cardiac disease in the Western world. It is a vasculitis of the medium-sized vessels of the heart, the kidneys, the liver and the splanchnic vessels. Uh, it is thought to be of infectious origin. Uh, however, no uh, causative agent has been found. Um, and because of the fact that it occur occurs primarily in some ethnic groups, there is a genetic predisposition. It can affect cardiac vessels and can lead in the untreated patients up to about 20% of uh, vascular damage. It is an immune-mediated response that causes uh, aneurysm formation in the coronary vessels and can cause thrombosis of those vessels, uh, leading to myocardial ischemia and sudden cardiac death. Diagnosis is made by uh, presence of fever for approximately five days and four or five other criteria. The five other criteria are conjunctival injection, that is a red conjunctiva. There is pericorneal sparing, and so there can be a halo effect around the cornea. Uh, and an anthem, which is dry, cracked lips, a, a reddened uh, oropharynx, and a strawberry tongue. An exanthem, which takes the form of a, any sort of a viral type rash, it can be morbilliform, macular papula, it can take many, many forms. Uh, lymph node enlargement, this is usually cervical lymph nodes, the anterior chain, and it's unilateral. And it could affect the extremity, so we can have erythema of the palms or of the soles, edema of the hands and the feet, and desquamation. So four of those five criteria and a fever. Now, we don't have to wait for five days to make that diagnosis, and if some of those criteria are in place, earlier diagnosis can be made. Investigations. There are not really that many investigations we need to do. Certainly a white cell count and a CRP may be important in terms of monitoring the progress of the disease. The most important investigation uh, we can undertake is an echocardiogram, which actually looks uh, at the heart itself. An electrocardiogram can be done. In most cases, it'll be normal. There may be some issues with arrhythmias and uh, PR intervals, etc. But if for most cases, the ECG will be normal. Treatment. The mainstay of treatment these days is IV immunoglobulin. Uh, there's a first dose given. It's usually done as an infusion, um, and it's done over 10 or 12 hours. The whole idea is to reduce the immune effect. Uh, and to reduce the temperature of the patient. So if the temperature is not reduced after the first infusion of immunoglobulin, a second dose can be given. There's certainly research at the moment going on about giving uh, pulse methyl pred uh, after a second dose of immunoglobulin has not worked. Certainly the use of immunoglobulin decreases one of the major side effects, which is coronary artery aneurysm formation or, um, or defects in the coronary vessels, and it can decrease this from 20% down to about 3% with the use of IV immunoglobulin. Previously, high-dose aspirin was being used, and certainly that decreased uh, the inflammation and uh, was helpful in coronary artery disease. These days, however, most of the studies use aspirin with IV immunoglobulin, therefore the effects of aspirin alone uh, are difficult to ascertain. There is no harm in using high-dose aspirin with immunoglobulin for these patients. The use of aspirin with immunoglobulin has been shown to decrease hospitalisation and decrease the duration of the disease. So that's Kawasaki syndrome.